The mojito is a Cuban cocktail consisting of five ingredients, rum, lime juice, sugar, mint, and club soda. Shortcuts sometimes include simple syrup or sweetened lime juice. It is traditionally served in a highball glass over ice, often garnished with mint leaves or a slice of sugarcane stock. It's cool, refreshing, and herbalicious. So if you are anything like me, you associate mojito with Miami. So the first time I went to Miami with my, with my friends, and we were trying to be grown up and sit outside and sip cocktails, so we had mojitos. And so now every time I think of mojito, I think of Miami, but I will say that I am a, a mojito snob, which is why I know the difference between that fake ass lime juice and that whack simple sugar, because my first mojito was really good. And if you if you are coming at me with fake lime juice and fake simple sugar, keep that shit, because I don't want it. My first mojito was on South Beach, and I had a huge plank of sugar cane in it, like a ruler sticking on my drink. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh wow. Like, that's how it's supposed to be. So I, I am very judgy. My judging of how good a bartender you are is the, the mojito. Because it has to be fresh and done right. As always, if you are of age and you have the opportunity, I highly recommend you enjoy one. Welcome to Cocktails and Crankshafts. I'm May guest host extraordinaire, and with me, as always, the molten round of melted chocolate, Dr. Nasty, the buffet slayer, the Africanized honeybee, the milk dud. Whoa, 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 okay, okay, okay. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm trying to get you up. You got me sounding like a pro wrestler. Hey, y'all, it's Car God Blog 05, alias the Killer Bee. Okay, so today we're going to talk about your 1 to 18 scale die cast car collection. Big toys for big boys, or something like that. Uh, when did you get started collecting, and why? Um, it was 2007. I was at a racetrack uh, for a historic racing event, and I wanted a souvenir to take home, so I went to the gift shop, and they had a 118 scale Porsche RS Spider from Porsche Design, and I bought it, and thus started a horrible, horrible, horrible addiction <laughs> kind of like crack but not really um so how many do you own um as of today so as of november 20th 2019 i have 50. and these aren't actually like toys no no these are precision scale models for static display um they are highly detailed have small intricate moving parts real rubber tires and uh, most of them cost well over $100. Yikes. So what determines what goes into your collection? So are there certain types of cars, brands, price points? Um, mostly it's about what speaks to me, you know, what the car says to me, like if it's a, a historical race car, significant model from, the past, from my past, should I say. Um, some of the more iconic cars of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, I stick mostly to auto art mini champs because they're sort of in my price range. The, to me, they're a good value between detail and cost. Um, but I have some uh, some true scale miniatures. I have some Kyosho. I have some uh, UT. And I have a couple of Exoto. Um, auto art is based out of Hong Kong. And uh, they were previously owned by a California-based company. Mini Champs is German, uh, Unique Toys, UT is Chinese, Kyosho is Japanese, Sunstar is Chinese, True Scales is based out of Hong Kong, and Exoto is actually an American company. Um, it's sort of an acronym, it stands for Exclusive Automobiles, uh, X Auto, Exoto. And uh, they originally made car covers and floor mats and stuff and sort of got into the precision die cast models later. Um, so let's look at your collection. Alrighty. Peugeot. What's that? Yeah, so we got this Peugeot 905, um, and this is the Evo 1B. This is a car that uh, the original version, the original 905, was, uh, it appeared in a magazine when I was just finishing high school, starting college, and it hung on my wall as a poster when I was in college, and it's just, um, it speaks to me. But, uh, this version actually won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1993. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Um, and now we've got the BMW M1. 
Yes, the BMW M1, uh, Italian design, German engineering. Um, this was a car that BMW built for group five racing and the rules changed and they were stuck with these cars. So they designed, uh, they, they turned them into a, a single make race series, BMW Pro Car Series. And then later during the eighties, they started doing some other racing with them. But um, this was sort of the genesis of the BMW M cars. This was the first BMW to ever have that M designation. Um, next up, we have the Lancia Stratos. Yes, the Lancia Stratos, sort of a, um, this was a purpose-built rally car. It is essentially a, a, a grab bag of a Fiat Corporation parts bin pieces. It's got a Ferrari engine. It's got, um, it's called a Lancia, but it's got some other Fiat stuff in there with it. And it's shaped like a wedge, it's tiny. And for several years, it dominated world rally racing. Well, that's kind of cool. So next up, we have the Nissan Skyline. Yep, uh, this is my Nissan fetish. What can I say? Uh, this is a sealed body type from Auto Art. So the doors and the hoods don't open. Not my favorite type of car, but I couldn't pass up a Skyline. So I got it. Well, you know, sometimes you got to have what you got to have. Exactly. Um, so this is the Ford Sierra Cosworth. The Ford Sierra Cosworth from Auto Art, um, known its close cousin in America was the Mercure XR4Ti, which was not a well-loved car in the 80s. But um, uh, the Sierra was Ford's sort of fill-in between the Escort or between the rear-wheel drive Escorts and the modern era. Um, they used it a lot in rally racing and in road racing. It had a four-cylinder turbocharged Cosworth engine. Pretty good car, actually, but just a little bit behind the times in terms of the technology um, when the Group B stuff came along. Got it. Um, next, we have the Kyosho Fiat 131 Abarth. Yes, this is the 131 Abarth from Kyosho. It is, uh, this is actually the car that replaced the Stratos, believe it or not, uh, in terms <laughs> of a Fiat corporate hierarchy when they retired the Stratos, they brought the 131 in as the new rally car. This is a traditional front engine, rear wheel drive, four cylinder. Uh, you know, it's your basic three box coupe. Uh, could easily be a four door sedan really, but this one is a coupe. Good car. This car in particular won the 1979 Costa Brava rally. Mm. Okay, next up we have an Audi 9B Quattro. Yeah, so this is the, uh, this is car is basically a silhouette car. Uh, this ran in the IMSA GTO category for one year, and then it was banned because of the all-wheel drive. Audi took their rally technology and squeezed it into a silhouette car that used, um, it did use the factory steel roof, which is how it qualified for GTO, but otherwise the car was made out of Kevlar and tube frames and whatnot. And um, it won seven out of the 13 races it entered. It did not win the championship or the driver's championship because there were 15 races that season and they skipped two and they won uh, seven of the other 13, so they didn't accrue enough points to win the championship. But in all other respects, they were very dominant. Interesting. Okay, now I'm sure this is not the same Toyota Corolla that I see driving two miles an hour down the street, but uh, it it's is a Toyota not, Corolla. <laughs> this is a European uh, only model. This is not a version of the Corolla we got in the United States. Um, and this car was, used as Toyota's rally car in the years after they stopped using the Celica. Uh, four wheel drive, like all rally cars of that era, turbocharged, yada, yada, yada. Um, I really like this car because it's a hatchback and I think it's cool looking. The interesting thing about this car is that the original race car was a Marlboro sponsored vehicle. And as you can see, these modern models, because of, uh, because of some regulations passed in Europe, they've stripped them of their uh, cigarette company sponsorship. So instead you get the, you kind of get the Marlboro logo, but you just get some black bars instead of it actually saying Marlboro. Well, you know, we can't endorse bad habits. Yeah, I mean, you know, cigarettes bad, even though I, I live in North Carolina and we all know about tobacco here, but yeah. Okay, so um, now this is the Audi Sport Quattro. Yes, this is the short wheel based version of the Audi Quattro Coupe. Uh, this was the, and this is the evolution of the original car, but uh, the Audi Quattro was the first four wheel drive rally car, changed rallying forever. Um, this car is a short wheelbase, so this is the evolution 
car basically between the original Quattro and the uh, the bewinged uh, Evo version. Good car. This one crashed out of the San Remo Rally, but um, like I said, a true pioneer. It changed rally racing forever because of the, four, the integration of four-wheel drive. And this is the Renault Alpine A442B. Yes, our French friends um, were determined to win the 24-hour Le Mans, their home race, so to speak. And they built this car to do it. Took them a couple of tries. And this is the 442B. Uh, the A442 did not win. It came close. And then the, the 442B did finally win in 1978. Uh, this car carries a V6 engine that eventually became the pioneering turbocharged V6 used in Formula One racing, also pioneered by Renault. So historic car in two senses, really. So this is the Lotus Renault 97T. Yeah, so uh, this is a Lotus chassis with a Renault, with that uh, Renault V6 turbo I was just talking about. Uh, this in particular was a Art, uh, Ayrton Senna car. He was a Brazilian Formula One driver who died in a horrific crash. Uh, let's see, this is another car that um, my version does not have, it, it's, it's black with gold trim, but it does not contain those magical words, John Player Special, because that's a brand of tobacco. <laughs> so um, uh, they changed the logos on these cars uh, with the tobacco band because uh, many champs in auto art do originate in, uh, in e the EU. Okay, so this is the Williams Renault FW14. Yep, this is a Mini Champs car. This is the uh, Williams Renault. FW stands for Frank Williams, who is the owner of the Williams Formula One team. Uh, this was the 1991 Nigel Mansell British Grand Prix winner. He won the race. Uh, Mr. Senna ran out of fuel and uh, hitched a ride with Mr. Mansell during the uh, parade lap. So the, the cool down lap after he had won the race. I mean, I'm pretty sure that it's not safe to ride on top of a car like that. Uh, this you know. practice was common in the 80s, has completely been banned. <laughs> Definitely pretty, not safe. Pretty but, sure. But it happened occasionally cool. during the 80s. I'm sure it was a different time. Um, so the Jaguar XJR9. Yes, ma'am, the Jaguar. Let me, let me stop. Uh, yeah, so the Jaguar XJR9, 7 liter V12, big, nasty, loud. This is actually uh, what they call a presentation car. This was um, the car debuted in 1988. So the Castro team was the sponsor in the United States and they painted the cars uh, this color. The actual race cars were number 60 and number 61 for the 1988 season. This is an Exoto. This car cost me a lot of money. And the one I bought is damaged, and it still costs a lot of money. Oh. But they're out of production, so you, you oh, take okay. what you get sometimes. I might someday try to find one that isn't damaged, but the, the damage on this one was such that I could tolerate. It was worth having in my collection. Cool. So this is the Audi R8 LMS. Yeah, so I drove its cousin, the uh, Audi R8 V10 Plus, which is a street car, but this is the racing version. Uh, this car was entered in the 12 hours of Bathurst in Australia and uh, did not win. Uh, actually, it didn't even finish, but I just thought it was a cool car because um, I'm not expressly a German car fanatic, but the R8 is a car that I respect and appreciate. And I like the fact that it's got that Black Widow spider on the on the outside of the car. I just think it's a cool logo. I want to say that's a pretty cool design. I dig it. Okay, now we have a Porsche 935 K3 with the so old this, school Apple logo. This car is a LGBTQ ally. That's a joke. Um, <laughs> the, rain, <laughs> the rainbow didn't. Well, I guess technically it was serving that purpose in in the early 80s, but um, at the time. Apple had this rainbow logo as part of their branding. Uh, this car is a Porsche 935 K3, which means it is a Crimmer 935 is a customer built uh, clone of the factory Porsche 935, more or less. It raced in the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1980. It came in 39 place. It was not running at the end of the race. So now we have a Nissan Skyline. Yes, another Skyline. 
This is the Group A version of the R32. This was raced in Japan. Uh, this particular car had a, a famous driver, but um, otherwise it was nondescript. I think it won once. All right. Ooh, fancy. An Aston Martin Vantage. I'm an Anglophile. I love British uh, cars. <laughs> Uh, I like the concept of Great Britain. I've been there a couple of times. It's an interesting country. Not the concept of Great Britain. The, the, the concept. It's it's an interesting place. The weather's whack, but... The, uh, it is cold, but it, what do you expect? It's a little island in a cold northern Atlantic. Yeah, and it's cloudy all the time. That said, um, the Aston Martin Vantage V12 GT3, this is a uh, essentially a presentation car. Uh, this car is uh, solid black instead of painted in its racing livery. But I thought it was cool, so I got it. It is cool. And I was, scheduled to, I was scheduled to drive an Aston Martin during my last trip to Las Vegas. However, it was down for maintenance, which is how I ended up driving the Audi R8. Hmm. That's a bummer. Um, so we have the Nissan Skyline GTR. Another Skyline. This car is also an R32 uh, built to Group A specifications, but this car in particular raced in the Australian Touring Car Championship, and um, it dominated the Australian Touring Car Championship, uh, earning the name Godzilla, which stuck. So um, you will often hear Skylines referred to as Godzilla, and this car is the reason why they're called that. It was driven by Jim Richards and Mark Scaife, and uh, this particular car won the 1991 Bathurst. Um, I believe that what was at a thousand kilometer or 24 or 12 hour. I forget. It won Bathurst in 1991. That's all you need to know. I've seen the video footage. It was incredible. Hey, we have another Porsche. A Porsche 961. This is the Porsche 961. This is essentially the racing version of the 959 supercar. Uh, this car raced in Le Mans in 1986. It came in seventh. Um, pretty plain looking, but I purchased it because of its historic significance. Next up, we have a McLaren F1 GTR. I like this color scheme. So McLaren, uh, this is the F1 GTR. So this is the endurance racing version of the McLaren F1, which was a million dollar streetcar designed to incorporate Formula One technology for the street. The driver actually sat in the center of the car and the passengers, the two passengers sat on either side, slightly behind him. It had a six liter uh, BMW built V12 and would drive, the street car could drive 233, 231, 200 and fast, very, very fast. I'll put the right number in later, but the car was the fastest street car on earth for some years. Oh, snap. They actually had to detune it a little bit to make a race car out of it. Yeah, because that's fast. Okay, and next is the Porsche 936 slash 77. Yes, this is the Porsche 936 77. Uh, car number three. It was in the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1977. We'll say it that way. But what had happened was... <laughs> um... <laughs> If, I, if memory serves me correctly, one of its sister cars won, but not this particular car. And the thing you got to know about Porsche and Le Mans is when they go, to, when they go, they go big. So there will be three, four, seven, you know, not, well, not seven, but um, they will put whatever their frontline car is, they will send several of them. Okay, another Porsche, the 956L. This is the 956L. Um, sort of the, the spiritual successor of the 936. Uh, it is a closed top car, but the engines are very similar. They're still the traditional Porsche air cooled flat six. Uh, this car won the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1984. Ooh, that's impressive. Um, and now the Porsche 911 GT1. This is the 911 GT1, which is, uh, even though it's called a 911 GT1 and did um, pretend to be a street car, it actually has more in common with that 956, uh, especially from an engine point of view. But this car was entered into the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1996. It did not win, um, but it gave a hell of an effort. <laughs> a for effort. 
Okay, so now we have the Nissan Fairlady Z432. So in that case, this would have been equivalent to an American 240Z. But of course, in in Japan, this car is called the Fairlady, and they have a lot of sub-models. So the Z432 was a special model. It had the uh, two-liter straight-six S30 engine, which was um, four valves per cylinder, three carburetors, and two overhead camshafts. That's where the 432 comes from. Got it. I like that design, though. That's neat. It is. I actually owned um, a 280Z, a 1978-280Z, five-speed. It died. Well, it didn't die. It never ran. I bought it to get it out of somebody's driveway. I paid 100 bucks for it, towed it to my house, uh, broke it up for parts, and sold it for mm, 500 total. Was all the parts I sold. All right. Uh, Blue Streak. I think that happened while you were overseas. Ah. Okay. Now we have the Nismo Fair Lady. Nismo. So Nismo is Nissan's in-house tuning outfit, sort of like the equivalent of a BMW M or a Mercedes-Benz AMG. Uh, this is a Fair Lady Z. This would be a 350Z in the United States, and I bought this one specifically because it's silver like my 350Z, although mine is not a Nismo model, I'm sad to say. Okay, so we, this is a Toyota 2000 GT. Toyota 2000 GT, 1967, 24-hour Fuji entrance. Uh, only 351 of these were built. Only 60 came to the United States. The engine was a straight six from a Toyota Crown sedan, further developed by Yamaha. Um, this vehicle was actually Yamaha's idea to uh, have Toyota produce a sports car that they could um, use as sort of their uh, flagship, what we call in, in the United States, a... Um, halo car car to get people into the showroom to buy they come in looking at the at the fancy sports car and walk out with the bread and butter sedan <laughs> okay so this is a lotus honda 99t yeah so this is a lotus 99t powered by a honda v6 twin turbo formula one engine uh during this car's heyday that engine could probably put out somewhere between 1,300 and 1,500 horsepower in qualifying trim, although not quite that much for race purposes. Hmm. Yeah. They were like grenades with the, pull, with the pin pulled. You knew it was going to blow up. It was just a matter of how long. Right. Creepy. Okay, so we have a uh, Subaru Impreza. Uh, yes, this is the Subaru Impreza WRC 1997. This car was driven by the late Colin McRae. He died. Not related to, to this, though. He died in a helicopter crash in 2007. Um, oh, okay. He was actually the 1995 World Rally Champion, uh, but obviously this was not 1995, and this car was not a world champion. Um, uh, the other thing about this is one of those infamous cars where the tobacco logo was changed. Um, those are really should be three fives. And depending on which version of the car you get, those will be three fives, which represent uh, the 555 tobacco brand. Got it. Used to be a cigarette called State Express 555. That's weird. Okay, so this is a Sauber Mercedes C9. Yep, uh, the Sauber team was based in Switzerland. I'm probably going to get that wrong. Uh, they were contracting on behalf of Mercedes to build this lovely, lovely race car with a twin-turbo 5-liter V8, I think. Um, this car was a beast in Juan Le Mans in 1989. To me, this was like the ultimate Group C car. And I love the fact that Mercedes went back to the silver, you know, the infamous silver arrows. So uh, this car was pretty cool in that sense. It is kind of neat. Okay, so we have Nissan Skyline GTR. This is the old school Skyline um, before they had all-wheel drive and turbochargers and whatnot. But this car in particular is 1971 Kunimitsu Takahashi, number six Japan uh, Japanese Grand Prix winner. And just for clarification, the, the Japanese Grand Prix was not a Formula One race until 1976. Prior to that, it was run either as sports cars or other formulas, but not Formula One. Got that out finally. Jesus. <laughs> okay, so this is a Lotus 311. 
This is the Lotus 311 from Auto Art. It is essentially a show car track day type vehicle, probably not legal in the United States. A variation of the Lotus Elise Exige uh, aluminum subframe. But the important thing here is it's the spiritual successor to the infamous Lotus 7, which was a kit car from the early days of Lotus and was like the most bare bones automobile you could imagine. It was basically four, four wheels, two seats, a four cylinder engine, and uh, a couple of fender panels. Like just enough to barely call it a car. Just enough to call it a car. Okay, the Aston Martin DBR9. So this is the DBR9 from Aston Martin. This particular car won the GT1 class in the 2008 24 Hours of Le Mans. I bought this car because it has those gorgeous blue and orange Gulf Weiler racing colors, which are uh, an iconic paint scheme in endurance racing, used by Ford, Porsche, Aston, and a couple of other brands over the years. I, th um, I like this blue and this orange. Yes, it's a very famous color scheme. Okay, so this is a Porsche 996 GT3 RSR. I uh, bought this one because it is the ultimate sort of customer racing Porsche. The, the 996 GT3, on top of having its own racing series, if you were watching other types of endurance racing, you were liable to see 10 or 12 of these things in the field because it was one of the cars that, cost, that Porsche built and would sell to anybody that had the money to buy one. Okay, so up next we have the McLaren P1 GTR. This is the Mac McLaren P1 GTR in yellow with green, with British racing green stripe, uh, rolled out for the Geneva Motor Show in 2015. Uh, this is essentially a customer race car. Okay, the Ford Escort Cosworth. Okay, we had that Ford Sierra Cosworth, and um, the thing about the Sierra is that it was big and heavy. So they had the idea to take the four-wheel drive system and the engine from the Sierra and squeeze it down into a smaller package. So they came up with this thing that loosely looks sort of like a real Ford Escort, you know, the front wheel drive ones that normal people buy, um, but is essentially a front engine, four wheel drive, scrunched up Sierra Cosworth. Okay. Uh, this car won the 1995 Thousand Miglia Rally, uh, which was part of the European Thousand Championship. Um, I always wanted one of these. The first time I saw one, it's something about that damn spoiler. I wanted one of these and I'm not a Ford guy, but the idea of a Cosworth turbocharged four wheel drive Ford Escort just appealed to me. You know, you just like the spoiler. Okay, so we have another McLaren. This is the Tag MT4 slash DB. Techniques de avant-garde. Um, so TAG was a Porsche engine. The engines were built by Porsche and they were branded as TAG. And so it's a McLaren TAG MP4 2B, uh, but really it's Porsche powered. And this is another one of those deals with the twin turbo V6 that was making right upwards near a thousand or more horsepower at qualifying form. Although they didn't turn the boost up quite that high for races. But this car originally said McLaren down the side, or excuse me, Marlboro down the side. Um, those decals are omitted for this particular version. Got it. Okay. So we have the Mercedes W05. This is Lewis Hamilton's 2014 World Championship car. Uh, in particular, this exact car is the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix winner. Um, all about old Lewis Hamilton winning Formula One races because they used to say people like us couldn't do that. I'm probably going to edit that part out. Oh, <laughs> He's an SJW. Damn it. All right, we need to show this picture of the shirt on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my Panther shirt. I'm going to get my Wakanda shirt. Not there today, colonizer. Yes. <laughs> Lose all my subscribers before I get them. Right? Okay. We're on the Jaguar. Anyway. Okay, Jaguar XJR9. So this is another Jaguar XJR9 from Exato. This is the European version, particularly this is the Le Mans low, uh, low downforce, or excuse me, high speed, low drag version. And um, 
This car in its original form said Silk Cut Jaguar, which is, again, a tobacco company. So my model is uh, just purple and white. But I love the details. These cars are exquisite. Did I just say that with a D? Exquisite. He did. He did. Sue me. Okay. Um, the Lotus Esprit V8. Lotus Esprit, my favorite car of all time, probably. Or at least it was, it was when I was 15. I love the fucking Lotus Esprit. Okay, look. Let's look at this one. Original Lotus Esprit. Fiberglass body, steel backbone frame. Same frame, or not the same frame, but Lotus did a lot of the chassis development work for the DeLorean DMC-12, which as we know is the, the Back to the Future time machine. Lotus, uh, old man Colin Chapman believed in lightness, so Lotus is t- tended to be lighter than similar cars. It was a James Bond car. And then they came out with a new updated version, and it was better looking and had a better turbocharged engine. And all of a sudden, this little four-cylinder deal was running with the Corvettes and the Ferraris of the world. Okay, so this is a Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.5 Evo Duh. Yeah, so this is the, now this is a race car, but this is the um, second evolution of the Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.5. So it had a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine. And the evolution is all the fender flares and spoilers you see stuck to it. Uh, This car was raced in the Macau Grand Prix in 1991. It was the runner up actually. And like a lot of other races that use the word Grand Prix in the title, obviously it's not a Formula One race. But um, in that particular years, the Macau Grand Prix was using the DTM rules, which were essentially um, like a group A type car. So it had modifications, but the modifications had to be sold on street legal cars. Okay. This is a Lancia Delta S4. This is the Lancia Delta S4. And the thing that you need to know about the Lancia Delta is that it is a front wheel drive, four passenger hatchback economy car. Oh. The Lancia Delta S4 is a collection of tube frames and Kevlar with a engine stuck in the back end, as you can see. And uh, uh, this particular engine was a four cylinder that was turbocharged and supercharged. It's very unique for that. Um, this car was fast in the Ruby era. This car was incredibly fast. This is a, another Mercedes Benz 190E 2.5 Evo Duh. This is the street version. As I was saying, all those uh, under certain European racing rules, things are allowed on the race car only if they've been homologated onto a street car. So this is the Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.5 Evolution 2. And as you can see, it's got fender flares and a big old spoiler on the back, even though it's got that plush leather interior. And Mercedes got what they wanted out of them because they dominated DTM racing for several years. Hmm. And look at that, that car is so cool. It's probably fun to drive. I'm sure it's fun to drive. Okay, this is a McLaren TAG MP4 2C. Again, with the uh, McLaren tag Porsche MP4 2C, uh, this particular car was driven by former world champion, 1982 Formula One world champion, KK Rosberg. And don't ask me his real name, I cannot pronounce it. He's, um, he is Finnish and he was a Formula One world champion in 1992. Um, obviously this was a little bit later in his career, Moving on. Okay, so now we have a Porsche 959. This is the Porsche 959 from Mini Champs. The 959 was not certified for United States use. This car was designed (laughs) for Group B, which um, Group B was an interesting set of rules. They had a rally version, but there was also going to be a road racing version of Group B, and then they pulled that back. So the 959 ended up being designed for a racing series that never happened. Um, oh, this is fun. A Nissan Z. This is the Nissan 350Z in chrome silver because I own a Nissan 350Z in chrome silver. So I added this to my collection just so I would officially have the same car that is parked in my garage. Or actually, it's in my driveway. I treat it bad. Womp womp. Womp womp. Okay, um, this is a Porsche 911 GT3 RS. 
Okay, this is the Mini Champ Porsche 911 GT3 RS. It is purple. I forget what this exact color is called. I call it Purple Source Rex. But I bought this car Warning because purple. I drove this car. I drove the hell out of this car in Las Vegas not too long ago. And that vi video will be available. There will be a whole episode about that. Ooh, I love fun. the color. I, I like that color. Barney Purple. Okay, this is another Porsche 911. This is a GT1. Okay, this is the GT1. This is the... Um, I actually own two of these. This is the 1997 version, and they are slightly different. The, the headlights, uh, some cosmetic things changed from 1996 to 1997, but obviously this is a different race car as well. This is the Auto Art version, and I bought it because um, Auto Art has a lot of detail in this car. This car comes apart. The, the front hood comes off. The rear hood comes off. The doors open. There's very good engine and suspension detail. It is really a nice piece of work. Okay. We've got a 2000 US GP event car. Yeah, so this is a little, this is a weird thing. This is sort of a generic Formula One car that was sold for the uh, 2000 United States Grand Prix at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So this is strictly built as a souvenir to be sold at the racetrack. And there are a couple of versions of it. I have this one, which I call our, um, our car, this one, Stars and Stripes. because you see, it has yeah. a, pretty much the flag motif. Yeah. And then I also have this one, which I call Stars and Stripes Forever. As you can ah. see, it's, it's uh, also spangly. But there is a third mm -hmm. one that is Similar to this one, but it's gold with stars on it. Um, I don't have that one. I'm, I'm debating whether or not I want to get it. Last but certainly not least, we have a Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Uh, this is Purple Source Rex again. This is the auto art version. And I got the auto art version because I like it a little bit better than the Mini Champs version. Differences in quality are actually fairly minor between the two brands, but the auto art car featured a couple of more things that I liked a little bit better in terms of the detail. But I'm gonna keep both of them because again, I drove Purple Source Rex and there are only a, a handful of cars in my collection that I can say, yeah, I drove that one. And this is one of them. All right, so that was the last car. My goodness, that's quite the collection. Um, you know, if I didn't know you, I'd say you had a problem or a habit. Um, I like to think of them as investments, um, but you know, I also used to collect uh, spoons and then I collect shot glasses and then I collected vodka bottles and I still have that enormous Hot Wheels collection. So it could be that I do have a problem, um, but it's better than me being a drunk. Very true. And it's better than the taking up space of the keychain collection I used to have. I mean. Yeah, so I got rid of furniture, but I'm keeping the cars. <laughs> <laughs>